All right, being seven o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Can, uh, item number two, can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Danny, Mr. Danny, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next item is walk-in. Are there any walk-ins? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, I guess in between these, i uh, just like to welcome Meg to the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for coming to the meeting, and thank you for uh, accepting the job and getting right to work, right? When did you start Monday? Yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yesterday. <laughs> Good. Well, we're looking forward to working with you. Um, and we'll get on to item number three, which is uh, a vote and discussion of uh, an agreement for the solar array. Mr. Banger. You need a second? Excuse me. Thank you. Um, this topic is the discussion about the Brightfield Solar lease contract. As we did with our contracts with the wind turbine, wind turbine we knew that when, as we got down to the final moment of them signing with their <coughs> lenders and banks and equities that some of the wording would need to change to recognize the role of the lenders and the banks and equities in their lease contracts so that if something happened to them the bank could take it over. Additionally, um, there are minor changes. The DEP has uh, issued a post-closure use permit which wasn't available at the time that we signed the lease so we wanted to recognize that in the lease document. Uh, this lease document, which you'll re-sign hopefully, uh, doesn't impose any additional obligations on the town. It doesn't limit any of the rights of the town. It doesn't change any of the protections for the town. It's uh, simply to recognize the realities of the currently designed solar plant. Great. So it's, it's a technical issue. And I, if I remember correctly, we had one of these for the... We signed one of these for the uh, windmill yeah. as well. And in fact, in the windmill, we had to sign both the new power agreement and a lease. But in this case, the power agreement is not involved. It's just the lease. So, And um, why don't I just take one second to go over a conversation that we had a little bit earlier. It's a 15 acres of land up on top of the old landfill right next to the current transfer station. Um, it's a solar way. There's a guarantee of uh, um, that they're going to be selling energy at a lower price than we're getting now and uh, there's a minimum that they have to provide us with or they pay the difference that we have to pay for National Grid. So it's a, a solid contract, sim very similar to the one for the uh, wind turbine. Yes, that's correct. And the contract gives us uh, step-in rights if something goes uh, wrong. It, it protects uh, our landfill. We will continue to be the operator and owner and responsible party for the landfill. Um, the company that we're, we work with here is a also does landfill work. They've done a lot of things on tops of landfills, including building shopping malls, so they're very familiar with the touchiness of a landfill. So we're comfortable with them, and it will provide about half of our power. Great. Any questions from the board? Uh, one question. Uh, Al, we were just talking about this, but when the wind mill is running and when the um, solar array is running, approximately how much of our municipal and school power will be green energy? Uh, these two units will supply all 100% of the power for all of our schools, uh, street lights, uh, town buildings, harbor masters building um, uh, throughout the town. will be 100% uh, renewable energy supplied as a municipality. And we may be one of the first in that situation. Great. Right. Good job, Al. Thanks, Patricia, and everybody in the process. That was my question. Sure. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the amendments to the lease agreement with Situate Solar, I, LLC, and to execute said document. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to item number four, which is um, discussion vote of the fiscal year 13 budget and articles. Um, I may bounce around a little bit here, but we'll, we'll start with number one. Um, number one is um, compensation of elected elected officials. Um, this is a standard one. There's been no changes to um, any of the uh, numbers from the past years. It's for the uh, selectmen and the assessors. There is one number change. There is one change, though. Do you want me to explain it? Oh, right. The uh, clerk. 
Yes. Um, our current town clerk is retiring after many years of service, so we anticipate having a new employee. So that salary range has been adjusted to reflect that they'll bra be a brand new um, employee, and it's been comparable and will be in accordance to the classification and wage scale for the professional employees union. So that numbers directly uh, salary on the professional staff scale. So it's a reduction of about four thousand dollars. Yeah, and we know. also did comparable salary surveys for like populations to make sure we were also um, paying a, a competitive wage. Great. Move Article 1. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. You know, I, I think, did you want to do the uh, beach sticker before that? Or is that, no, I guess that's involved in that. Is that number two. Funds. Okay. Yep. It's in the, it, it was just written here. Uh, great. So we'll move to Article number 2. Which are the revolving funds? Um, a revolving fund is is, is a, a tool that we use to receive funds in and make payments for a specific activity in town. <coughs> We're going to be voting on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Do we have to do them independently, or okay? So uh, I'll just run through them quickly. It is a uh, the senior center program fees. So we. Uh, um, collect the money from the participants in the programs and then pay the instructors to do that. The planning board application fees in the amount of $50,000 and this again is for postage advertising and administrative expenses related to planning board items. Um, inspection department as well, the food establishments for the Board of Health is $18,000. The school bus transportation fees for um, the transportation fees that people pay for their, schools, their children use the school buses in the amount of $300,000. Um, the beach sticker fees, um, again, which is the fees that everyone pays to use the, the beaches in the town, and then the expenses that are associated with that. I'll come back in one second for that to go over the details. Um, the wind turbine revenues <coughs> in the amount of $390,000, which is uh, going to be used to take in the money uh, that we receive from National Grid for selling them power, and then uh, we'll be allocating that accordingly. Um, and then the solar array will be identical to that where it is a solar array in the amount of $290,000. And again, those are more accounting um, mechanisms for us to collect money and then pay money out. Um, why don't we go back to the beach sticker one because that's the one that's a little bit different than the others is there are, well, because we have some details on it in terms of the expenses involved. Um, uh, I refer you to the article or this, this document here that we have. Um, Trisha, do you want to, uh, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer, you want to come up? Jennifer and Chris are here. Good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thanks. So two years ago, we um, start, we created this revolving fund um, and took the expenses out of the recreation department and put it into this revolving fund. So the money that's received from the beach stickers goes into this revolving fund and then the expenses associated with um, the lifeguards and et cetera are paid from that revolving fund. Right. Um. I wrote up a little thing just Great. about that, you know, that if we are um, coming into our third year. It's been very successful. Um, <coughs> as you know, this pays for all the services that are related to the beaches. So the budget actually represents the recreation department, town administrator, police, DPW, police, board of health, and technology. Um, since its inception, we have not only been able to continue to provide lifeguard services at our five beaches, but have started to be able to tackle some long overdue capital improvements. We've upgraded the emergency radio system. Between the beaches and the harbor master, it's more effective and efficient system to communicate from the beaches to the harbor master and over to the recreation department. Purchased new and improved beach chairs. Uh, DPW is making improvements to the parking lot. It's currently working at um, Minot Beach parking lot. And we were able to create a module for the sticker database to allow residents to purchase their stickers from the convenience of their home 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This year we're requesting the purchase of life-saving AEDs to be able to um, have at each beach. The installation of a foot bath at one of the beaches, um, and if that goes well, we'll look at it possibly installing them at multiple beaches in the future. The installation of whiteboards in the back of the beach chairs to improve communication between the lifeguards and the patrons. Uh, lockable storage for the equipment. Right now we've been storing our equipment under the houses of residents and that's 
not optimum. It's been very generous of them, but we have got more and more equipment that we have to store that's costly and whatnot. So lockable storage. And then DPW is going to continue making improvements in its parking lot. Uh, last year we sold 5,677 beach stickers between residents, um, second stickers, Hummer Rock sticker only, and non-residents. Approximately 16% of those were sold online. Our goal this year is to exceed that number, and we're working hard to do that. Um, the beach study committee has been getting together, and they're marketing the new online program with signage at the transfer station, town hall. We've been able to put a link on the new recreation um, activity site, like where you register for rec programs, where you can link back and buy your beach sticker. Um, also, for residents that might not have a computer at their home, um, we're going to be setting up kiosks at Town Hall, the library, recreation, and maybe a few other right, um, off-site town departments. And uh, important to note that there's no additional fee if you um, use an electronic check to purchase your beach sticker online. And uh, beach stickers will go on sale March 15th, and we're strongly encouraging residents to do that online. And the staff does an excellent job. They turn the stickers around in two to three days. Great. Um, any, any comments? Well, one question I had was, is, has the committee considered maybe doing a, a week pass as opposed to a seasonal pass? Mm -hmm. For those people who are traveling for a week to situate, you know, be a benefit for them to be able to to get a pass for a week and then or maybe yes, even we've maybe considered eight days. We've mm -hmm. considered a week and we've considered a daily. Um, until we get the administrative piece in order um, with these changes, we can't do another layer yet. We just can't handle another change yet and another type of sticker. So this year we want to implement these changes, like Jennifer said, to move as many people to online as mail-in as possible. And then um, we, we, I know the chief feels very strongly that he would like to have a daily or a weekly. Um, and we talked about it at the staff meeting this morning. Um, but again, we need to get our own administrative stuff better in shape with the changes we've made in the last few years. And then I think you hopefully will see that next year for sure. When you're doing that, think about it in the eight days so people can come in and get two weekends out of it. Yeah. yeah that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, um, you said we sold about 5,700 stickers. Yes. Do you know how many of them were Hummer Rock only? Yep, so uh, 4,406 were resident stickers, 1,052 were second stickers, 89 were Hummer Rock, and 130 non residents. 130. Now, will, will the committee come before us and suggest pricing? This isn't... It's the same. We're no change. Okay. And that was... Um, 30. 370. What, what the pricing? Yeah, no, a beach sticker is $35? No. no. What, what, what's your question you're no, asking? No, the... the, the um, Non-resident. Non-resident and the Hummer Rock. Was it Hummer Rock? Hummer Rock is 75. 75. Non-resident is 200. 200? Yeah. Okay. Well, the numbers are up. Because I think in year one we sold four right. Hummer Rock ones. So um, that's good. Um, and <laughs> just on the uh, the P and L, so just so people understand, the revenue was about two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars this year. Yeah. For this sheet here, and then the expenditures were about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. No, that's next year's. That's next. That's year. next, that's next year. year. That's a budget, budget for next year and the projection based on the. YTD, right. yeah. And it includes capital projects in here. Yeah. Um, one thing you did mention, Jen, was that, that there's expenses from the town administrator, um, fire, police, those types of things. Are they in? Everything. Is there like an overhead account that we? No, I actually, I don't know. What am I in? Well, you're just, well, not to say just, but yours is staffing for the issuing, right? The staff. Oh, the it, so that's when she said, it, she means who bud whose budget is. So the uh, beach sticker clerk is in my budget. The trash removal, you know, right. so but that's there's no, how it not like the enterprise funds where you. No, who gets to approve the bill is really what it is. Okay. So I, yeah, so. So we don't take ten thousand of the police department and throw it no. in this. It's all stays. Yeah, so it's funds. not like an indirect enterprise right, right, right. fund. Okay, just so I understand, so funds are dispersed from this to cover the costs in the different departments that are. Right, because I have the beach clerk beach. person. Gotcha. He has the right. trash. She has right. the lifeguards. Oh. Bill has the software. Right. He knows. Yeah. Right. But in the enterprise funds, we have those indirect kind of over. Yeah, there's accounts. no charge like that. It's all in and all out in right. the same fund. And the, the good thing about this is that 
before it used to be very difficult to get capital plans done, capital projects done, mm -hmm. and now we just can put it right in the budget and we've got John and I are very happy to see seaweed removal. Yeah. Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> um defibrillators as you mentioned. Um, and then yeah. some shower installations and parking lot improvements. You know, these are all things that we've been trying for years to get, so it's, it's very good. Any other questions on any of the revolving funds? This is great stuff. Three years. Motion? Perfect. Uh, move to uh, establish the beach sticker. Not establish, but, but move to approve the uh, revolving fund proposed for beach sticker. Yeah. Just Article 2. Was it Article Yeah. No, it's only part of Article 2. You, it's the only one you wanted to discuss, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you so can move the whole article if you want. Oh, yeah. Move the whole article. Move Article 2. Second. Second by Mr. Norton. 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 <laughs> <laughs> tan guy. <laughs> 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 I didn't recognize you with your tan. <laughs> no. <laughs> I hope the TV people are... Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain. Abstaining, Mr. Harris, so that's four to zero. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, Chris. See you. Uh, moving on to article number three. Three. That's just too confusing. So this is another revolving fund. This is going to be, be the establishment of one. Um, do you want to go over it, Trisha? You want me to just <coughs> a, a revolving fund um, for health? I think Jennifer explained during her Board of Health presentation that for the last few years, the flu vaccine has been completely unpredictable. We're not going to get any. We're going to get some. We might get half. We might get more after we spend our allotment. And so what I think she very um, smartly proposed in her budget is just for us to have an allotment. So at least we know every year, no matter what the uncertainty is from the state in terms of flu um, vaccines, that we'll have an amount of vaccines that can make sure the town can address those people who need to have a flu shot with chronic illnesses or elderly or what every year. So. Um, this, I believe, is for 600 doses, but I'm not sure. The reason we're establishing a revolving fund is we can get reimbursed when we submit. So we charge folks for the, the, fee, the, the shot, and then that goes in the revolving fund, and we submit you know, what our purchase price is for the vaccine, and then the state reimburses us a good portion of that. So. Um, that can even let us buy more vaccine in the future, depending on how much we get back. Do we actually charge for it, or is it free? In some cases, it depends. It can be free. In others, we can charge the fee. The medic, not like you can't go get a flu shot and DPH will reimburse you. But if you're 65 and have asthma, that's going to be free to you under the reimbursement. So it's, it's you know, um, infants, mothers, there's certain thresholds so that you can submit, but the general person at large, we would submit a, a back charge to. Motion? Move to support Article 3. Second. Second by Mr. Danahy. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. <coughs> so we're going to, um, number four, which is on the agenda, we already did um, at the last meeting, I yep. believe. So the capital plan has already been put before or been, been uh, voted on. Um, I'm going to move article number 20 up next. Um, Mark? This is uh, the article on the mooring regulations and a bylaw adoption. Right. Uh, good Mark evening, gentlemen. Mark Matheson, uh, Citra Harbor Master, and uh, just here to um, present an, an overview of some proposed bylaw changes. Um, regarding moorings uh, in Citra Harbor, specifically commercial moorings, moorings owned by commercial fishermen. Uh, and the intent of, of the changes is to um, try and stimulate some additional economic activity down there in the uh, commercial fishing industry as well as some of the ancillary businesses that depend on the um, fishing industry um, for their livelihoods. Uh, the first change would allow a, a mooring owned by a commercial fisherman to be used by another commercial fisherman um, for up to two years. Currently, uh, one is not allowed to utilize somebody else's mooring for more than seven days, uh, or it's considered presumptive evidence that the mooring is being rented, which is prohibited. Um, the idea here is that we, ha we have some folks who have boats 
they have federal permits, they have state permits to, to go out and catch fish and sell those fish. Um, but right now they're on the mooring waiting list, waiting for a space to become available in the harbor to moor their vessel. Um, this bylaw change would allow those folks to go out there, fish, earn money, create jobs, sell their fish to other folks who are working in the harbor while they're waiting on the mooring list um, for mooring to become available. The second change um, would allow... Well, oh, are you going, are you still on that article? Or that one bylaw? Yes. So are you, are you saying that they would actually go use somebody else's while they were out fishing? Is that the way it would work? Uh, if they were hauled out, um, if, if, you know, some fishermen fish for different species during different times of the year, uh, so one fellow might not be um, fishing, you know, for four or six months, this would allow maybe a fellow who has a lobster boat um, to go out there and, and work while the other folk, while the other fellow isn't using his mooring. That's the main thing, the, the, the fishing for different catch. Um, the, the second change would allow a commercial fisherman um, to own an additional mooring, up to two moorings. Currently, uh, no individual can own more than one mooring. Um, but there are, uh, again, some opportunities for um, people to get additional licenses, to buy additional boats, and take advantage of some economies of scale um, to grow their businesses. Um, under the current system, the, because they're only allowed to have one mooring, uh, that opportunity isn't there. So again, this is just a chance for, for these folks to grow their business. Mark, uh, is there a limit on that? I mean, could they own 10 moorings? Two. two, two, two. Uh, there is a, 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 an ad addition to that. A um, commercial fisherman could also, in addition to those two commercial moorings, would be allowed to own one rec recreational mooring. So that, it, you know, if the person had a recreational boat that they'd like to go out on weekends and, and do their thing, we didn't feel as though that those um, folks ought to be um, prohibited from having a, a recreational mooring by virtue of their occupation, you know, being a fisherman. Um, so again, I think that that was something so that's fair to them. Technically, you could have three then. Two, so two commercials have three. and one recreational. Correct. Thank you. Can I uh, just jump in here, Tony? You met Joe, and you asked, could someone have 10? Is there a limit? No, I, said, yeah. I know, yeah, but there's a limit. That was discussed at length. Yeah. What is the proper number? Yeah. We discussed five. We discussed three, mm -hmm. and the um, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but two was thought at this point to be the best place to go to try to hit that sweet spot because if you do allow too many, it's going to have the converse effect of what we wanted. It'll end up probably l narrowing and limiting the that's, fleet, that's the number of people asked. that are in there. So we thought two was about right given the number of moorings that we had okay. available for the commercials to sort of to help out, but not inadvertently narrow. Well, I, I was going to, I guess I'll jump in here. I'm <coughs> well, oh no, better yet, I'll wait till Mark's done, then I'll. Let me just say. He's done. Well, the, the, the only, the, the third and final piece is that we tightened up the definition of a commercial fisherman just so that um, it, it, it's now um, defined a, a little more narrowly just to prohib, pr prevent anybody from you know, a fellow coming down and saying, you know, I have a, a clamming license and I want to get on the commercial fishing list. So um, these people have to be engaged in fishing and the sale of catch is their primary means of um, occupation. So do you want to read it? it? I think it says an individual holding a federal or state commercial ground fish, lobster, or scallop license <coughs> whose principal means of employment is, f is fishing and the sale of the catch. Correct. Sean? Well, I was going to stop by saying, um, the whole industry, I've, as, you, as you know, I, you know, I've been around the pier probably for about 30 years, and the, since then the industry has changed like I never would have predicted. Um, and I'm really going to steal a page from, or a paragraph from Rick here. Mark has really um, hasn't forgotten, you know, really kind of the roots of Situate, where it's, uh, you know, where Situate kind of has its reputation and tradition of commercial fishing. Let me just uh, stop by jumping in at the second um, change that he talked about, ha holding one, mo holding one, more than one mooring. Guys, if we all have federal licenses, we can catch X amount of pounds per year. And if Joe feels like he doesn't, you know, he for whatever reason doesn't want to go out and catch his quota, he can sell it to you. And but John might have two federal licenses with two different boats. So, I mean, it, it's really, it's changed tremendously. And, uh, and I just want to commend Mark on what he's attempting to do to um, change with the times. And, 
and work with these fishermen and at the same time you know uh, uh, also work with the, the people with pleasure boats you know in, in and out of town it's it's uh, he's <coughs> probably got one of the toughest jobs in the town um, and you know you're doing a great job thanks Thank Mark. Motion? I'll move I'll move article 20 second second, second by mr. Danny further discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice job, Mark. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. And, and Mr. Murphy as well for chairing the waterways during all that, too. When you see John, thank him, too. And Mr. Murphy. And Mr. Murphy. And Mr. Murray for chairing the waterways on to Mr. the... Mr. Murray for thanking Mr. Murray. <laughs> 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 Mr. Yeah, Mr. Norton for thanking Mr. Murray. Okay. Um, we can do either five, which is the whole operating budget, or number 12, which is, uh, uh, why don't we do five? We'll, we'll go in numeric. Uh, Let's do five last. Do five last. Yeah, because okay. I need to talk to you about that before two. Great, so let's do number, um, Twelve. we're gonna do, okay. why don't we do the, uh, the one in our packet that's the creation of a special revenue fund for street acceptance and road improvements? Sure. Um, this is an article you haven't seen before, but you did hear it talked about Tuesday night when the chair of the Capital Planning Committee mentioned the special revenue fund. What I did not know till Wednesday morning, because I wasn't sure, was in order to create it, we have to do it by a town meeting warrant article. It doesn't have to be reauthorized every year. It's just a one-time thing. And what this will do is, and um, Mr. Bangett's talked with the board before, is when we accept new public ways that were formerly private ways, um, the residents agree to pay for the cost of improving any needed roadways improvements to bring the road up to our town standards. So in order for that mechanism to happen, we need to ascertain the betterment and uh, notify the residents of what their proportional costs will be. And like a betterment, they can do it over 20 years or they can pay it, you know, up front. But the account needs seed money. The DPW anticipates doing a lot of th this work this summer, and um, um, so they need seed money in order to, to get the work done and then, you know, tell people um, what their proportion is. But since some of it might come in over 20 years, um, you know, that's a, f a funding gap for us. The identified amount for the roads you've already accepted last year, the two that are on the warrant this year don't need any improvements, is $358,000. So because it was a capital item, but we didn't want to increase the debt budget anymore or do borrowing, um, I decided that we would pursue a special revenue fund which allows us to accomplish what we do. And um, because it's sort of a narrow thing on the streets. So rather than borrow the money, what we're going to do is get this account started. Al's going to use, um, there was $110,000 of road maintenance money in the capital plan. That's come over to this amount, and he's going to use Chapter 90 money to just get some of the work done before we can start getting the cash in. Because Chapter money can be used for any public way, and these streets have been accepted already. And then in the fall, we'll reconcile it. So, um, so it should be able to at least get us going. Go ahead, Chuck. It's, you mean reconcile so in the fall we could take, if Al takes some of his Chapter 90 money to improve some of these, you know, public ways, we can take that back and to resurface. put it back to Chapter 90. Okay. Exactly. What we need to do is we need a mechanism Just for the funds till we start getting the cash mm -hmm. back from the residents and improving the ways. And that's not going to be street specific. That's going to be for these these those streets last fall not these two those those streets it's last fall and then other streets as they come up yes that's why it's it's called the street acceptance road improvements fund specifically okay. for those streets you're going to be accepting that need approved after their acceptance they need to be brought up to the town standard and the residents pay for that okay but that's but that that account will stay open for future yes good yes. right and not just for one street yeah. in and out gone no it's kind of like the police detail thing we do it but we bill it out differently but we don't have anything in the town finances right now to allow that to happen so we're creating this here we're not going to need to reauthorize this each year because nope. we're just creating it so we can seed it as you yes. said and then once that's in it's going to be yeah okay. and then as part of Al's budget 
when you look at his budget every year that you can look at the in and the out as far as how it's going. Understood. I guess I got to ask a question. I'm confused. And other words, we're taking the $110,000 that we originally had in the capital, and we're going to use it in this revolving fund going forward. And then you're going to take Chapter 90 monies that we're getting from the state to be able to complete these two streets right. for the sum total. I understand the betterment, betterment but I'm, I guess what I'm saying is over the next 20 years, we're going to be receiving all the funds, and that's going to go into this, this fund here. So I think you're saying the Chapter 90 monies that we're ordinarily we could take and use for any other street, it's actually we're not going to really be able to get that back this year. It's going to take a year, a few years, actually two. 20 years. No, no, yeah, it shouldn't take. They, good. Yeah, could, could it? So are we going to have lousy streets for a few years? Just because? one, just this one year, we're using it to f start this fund. And then we intend to reconcile right. at the fall town meeting. All right. Now, the 110, the article says to borrow, transfer, or whatever, but we think we can use the Chapter 90 money, and then before we borrow, we come back to this board to make sure it was okay. But Al wants to go ahead. Say, my understanding was in the fall, there'll be another opportunity to fund this um, fund from, other, from um, surplus capital, and et cetera. So then our chapter 90. And then we'll re credit back the chapter 90 money and that will this be. This fall, okay. not years out. Right. This fall. And oh, we have John's a balance right. of chapter 90 money such that I've got plenty of chapter 90 money. I, I've got plenty of work to do this year with the monies that are available because of the funding that we've got. I guess my point was, is and I understand, you're trying to figure out a source how this is going to get paid without having to go out and borrow or. Right. I, I understand it. What we're in essence saying is we're going to use our chapter 90 money this year to get these streets started. And, and at, the other streets will be sacrificed, in a sense, because we need to start this whole fund to, without having to. Chapter 90 money. Correct. But it, my, my reason for saying is because it's a betterment, you got 20 years to pay it. And nobody's going to pay it up front, plus the interest. So it's going to take 20 years to, to some get folks that money. May, some folks may pay it up front, because it's 358000 for six streets, and some streets don't need to bill each resident on that right. street $10,000. They might, you know, or 15, you know, 20,000 that they would need like a sewer betterment to apportion over the term. Plus the interest rate on these betterments is quite high. The interest rate on these betterments is 4% to the resident. I have no problems with the thought so process. I just wanted to make sure I understood it, that's all. Danny, I believe the, the plan is in the fall, uh, a round of capital planning, we put, the, put the capital money into that fund and take the chapter money 90 money back out. So it's really like a, a six month, five month period when the chapter 90 money is being used, but then it's being paid back. And they're all public streets anyways, so. So he has 200,000 in the road budget, the FY13 budget too. The problem is his chapter 90 money over two years is 400,000 and we have committed to these residents the 368 already. So that's why there's a small borrowing piece in there. But we don't anticipate we would need it maybe till later in the year, but we need the authorization now. But we would come back to the board for that. So you'll see, still see plenty of road work yeah. this year. Oh, no, I know. I'm, 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 I'm just saying it just <coughs> it's taking money from Peter to pay Paul, in essence. And the yeah. point being is that even when next in the fall, you're going to get money from the capital. Where's that money going to come from? It's going to be items that are going to be pre-cash or some other source, but I, I, which I understand. I just, so just want to make sure we're clear. So to borrow the money and put it into to this account and then, be, and then pay it back over 20 years, and then as the betterments are being paid, you know, it's the same right. in on and off. That's not the strategy yeah. that was chosen, but I think what we need to be clear to all of our residents, citizens, <coughs> is that uh, that bringing these streets up to current standard is being funded by the residents who live on those streets who ask that that happen. So it's uh, their money being used to fix these streets as they committed to and as we, and then now as we're committed now to it's go our the work. Term, yeah. So none of this interferes with our ability to do road work on all the other public streets with the other public funds that we have available. Okay. So the $110,000 was not in the capital plan? I, we took it out of the capital because I said I wanted to be a special. That's just like a contingency option that we want the approval for because he has money in the operating budget for roads too. But again, we have $368,000 of work that we're obligated to so no, fund. I understand. So, so but, but is this article, this article is actually saying that we could borrow 
or transfer $210,000. Yes, that is so correct. So if we chose to, or no, what, what the town would give us the authority to borrow it, if all of it. Mm -hmm. So it essentially is a new capital item of which our plan is to just transfer some of the Chapter 90 money to it. Yes, we expect the Chapter 90 money and the money that's in the FY13 operating budget for road maintenance, that 200000 should get us there so we won't need to do that. But if we can't, then we have to have that as an option. But we wouldn't use that unless we came back to the board. So you wouldn't actually go get the money until – this is authorizing you to do it, but it's you can't it, Right, it's authorizing, but we – I. We hope if based – we the problem is we really won't know until we see the manner in which folks are going to pay it back. Right. So there is a possibility that we'll have to bond some of it, but we don't know until we actually get in the game and start doing it. And so we can't we, do that till we have the appropriation. So on the capital planning, what we were trying to do is not make this a capital item. Right. And we were looking for some mechanism so that – because really, yeah. you know, unlike buying a truck, you're, you're doing something, you're getting paid for it. Yeah. So it's – you know, loan, you're loaning it to the to the user, so there really isn't a mechanism to do that. Yeah. You know, you've got to you've got to use your fund, whether we borrowed from. I wrestled a lot with whether including it, <coughs> but if he has on average two hundred thousand a year from Chapter ninety, and there's two hundred thousand in the operating, and our obligation right now, without bidding or doing anything, is three sixty eight that we are mandated to do. It's just then we'd have to come back and say with better information we know, but we also know how many are going to be betterments and how many is going to be upfront cash. And we'll also know that the price we're most likely to do this work will, will perhaps be much less, will be less right. than the 368. 368 was the not to exceed amount. Right. And with competitive bidding, I think we're going to be able to come in for less than that. And the last piece, not to belabor it, is in May and June, we can transfer surplus funds that we've identified in the operating budget and so that's another way that we think. So that, that I know the borrowing is scary, but that's like a safety net just in case those other options um, can't fund what we actually have in actual cost. And I guess the long-term picture is adding these roads essentially, of eventually will add to our chapter nine. That's money. the whole intent. So. Yep. Okay. And then there'll be there'll be it'll be a fund with money in it, so that as new uh, other other uh, roads want to join the party and become public roads and get upgraded, then there'll be a source of rotating money in there to pay it for my belief. Right. Okay. No motion? Yes. Move Article 7, Creation of Special Revenue Fund, Street <coughs> Acceptance Road Improvements Fund. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Take a break. So now we'll go to yeah. um, Article number 12, yeah. which is the... Um, the uh, Transfer Station Enterprise Fund. Article 12. So, um, we're revisiting this one. This, this little sh sh so, the um, requested amount for this enterprise uh, fund for FY13 is $1,324,000. $470. The approved, rec um, the recommended town administrative budget is $1,279,117. And with that budget, after the revenue and the expenses are reconciled, would leave retained earnings of $280,000, $279,000. Four twenty to be exact. And um, that's really good news because in FY09, we had a $70,000 deficit. So that's, again, uh, commendable work on the part of the DPW, but um, this budget's in good shape. Plus, we raised the price of the bags. Huh? Plus, we raised the price of the bags. Yeah, right. <laughs> that helped, too. But that was uh, three years mm. ago now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's – and you haven't had to do it since. Right. So. so is the that price – that bag raising only, I think, increased revenues by 20000 or something like that? I think it was thirty. Thirty thousand? No. Yeah, no, but some several tens only, it's not not that scale. Um, um, so Trisha, this is the so what are the expenses for the year? Is this the revenue? This is the appropriate no, the, 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 this is the 
the new expenses for the transfer that's center. That's the budget. What's that number? I'm sorry. One two seven nine. Yeah, that's the budget. That's the budget. That is the budget. Yep. And the revenue for is ex is expected to be the same. The so it's a break even. The revenue is uh, projected to be one point one nine one. So there'll be a small loss. Yes. Um, and there was last year. Last year there was a. Actually, last year we had a year end surplus of twenty two thousand. The year before, we had a $36,000 deficit. So we're going in the right direction. The budget that we looked at, though, was higher than this number. Higher than the? the one, when we reviewed it, the enterprise fund, you, it went down to 127. Yes, but um, during the budget review, um, in the capital plan, he had asked to replace um, a loader or a backhoe, and that's not funded. So then he said, well, if you're not going to replace the, the backhoe, I need more money in the repair account to keep the other one going. So there's a change from the original one you saw. But it went lower. Yeah. Right. Okay. Move Any other motion. questions? Yes, please. Move article, move to support article 12. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's four to zero. Mr. Harris is uh, abstain. Um, <coughs> article number 18, which is the small write-up right after the, uh, the one we just looked at. Um, so this is an article that we're putting before the town. Right now our bylaw says that we have to um, put our warrant into print 30 days before the town meeting. And what that does is it really puts our whole process, it, it makes us jam a lot of stuff in into a shorter period of time. So what um, what this is proposing is that we put it in the paper no less than seven days before um, the town meeting as opposed to 30 days before the town meeting. Um, it makes sense. Uh, Trisha brought up a very good point this afternoon that um, that the sooner that it's in the paper, closer to the day of the actual town meeting, it will probably be fresher in people's minds and be, you know, more of an alert to people that a town meeting's coming up and what's on it as opposed to 30 days before. Um, is there another, uh, other than those two reasons of giving us more time to do the process and alerting people closer to the date of the act? Yeah, and I think we'll actually be able to submit the budget knowing what we might be getting for local aid because the governor's budget will be out by moving it out. Right now you get it from me December 30th. So if you get it the end of January, we're going to have a better reliable number, not the number, but at least an indication of our local aid, which is a huge chunk of revenue, and also be able to capture another month of departmental expenditures, because right now you're only getting five twelfths. Right. So you'll be able to at least get 50 percent. Um, so there's a number of advantages. Health insurance rates aren't even voted till January. We're never able to capture those either. So there's a number of benefits, not to mention uh, it will be administratively have uh, give us some breathing room when, you know, for if, you know, there's issues and we can't decide we have that time instead of truncating it all right now, which is very, very difficult. But which is why uh, we're meeting. Go ahead. Uh, just, yeah, just a, as a, <laughs> this is a third reason, I think. Uh, in the past, with the, with the uh, long window, 30 days in advance. I think people, uh, if I remember back, people rushed things, uh, you know, the possibility of errors became very uh, prominent, evident uh, as we get closer to town meeting, people were trying to make changes because they they, uh, they wrote it in such a way that uh, they now wanted to change it. So I think by bringing it closer to town meeting, it will give people more chance to get it right uh, the first time. So that's just another reason to do it yep. any other comments you know and also just two years ago our town meeting would have been next week March. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we pushed it from March, yeah. which means that the warrant would have had to have been done back a month ago today January. Yeah. Yeah. and you're so, still pretty early right. compared to even exactly. in April I think one of the big impacts this is going to have is on the special town meetings in the fall because there'll be a lot less of backing and filling because we'll have better feeling on our numbers now. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Cool. So again, that's why we're meeting tonight because the warrant has got to be done by Friday or Monday. In the warrant? The, I mean, it, to the, when does it have to be to them? By Monday or Tuesday? Um, well, it's going to be published in the ledger this year because the mariner needed it tonight. And that 
just can't happen. So mm -hmm. it's going to the ledger tomorrow and will be in next Friday's paper. Um, any other discussion? Oh. Motion? Move, move Article 18. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 That is 4-0. Uh, okay. I think that is... <coughs> do you want to do the two that we didn't get to? Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't we do... Uh, Tuesday night we met till about midnight and there were two that we didn't get to. So um, why don't we go do those now and then we'll do the whole wrap up with another... There are three. There are three. There's three. Okay. And we'll do All three. Right. Articles 19, uh, 21, and 22, Mr. Chair. Great. So wh why don't we start with um, number 19, which is the um, the uh, flood floodplain maps. Plain stuff. Let me give everyone a second to go to their traffic plan. Tuesday night. Oh, did you give us the stuff again? I did. I did give it to you again. So it's behind your new Article 7. Oh, good. Here we are. Great. Don't have my <coughs> but. Great. So this is, um, if I remember correctly, this paragraph here is uh, uh, essentially t t t adopt uh, the new federal law from the National Floodplain Insurance um, and changing our bylaw to match what they're saying are the uh, um, requirements that they're, that they're changing. Did I mumble that well enough? That's essentially, <laughs> essentially it. We, um, flat play maps work, maybe you know, are dated every five years, I think. And essentially they're incorporated as part of the wetland regulations for conservation, but that's really not um, enough um, can't think of the word. Uh, that's not enough. It's not substantive enough um, in terms of just having it sort of into the wetlands regulations and the conservation rules and regs. So um, we have we're going to accept it at town meeting, and then the conservation commission, which they always did anyway, will have a public hearing on the new the new regs. But this is a lot of work to be updated in, by the town, and it helps all homeowners get their reduced flood insurance, which is huge. And it's, like I said, a lot of work. Um, but um, this will just acknowledge that the new maps have been updated and incorporated as part of the Conservation Commission regs. Yeah. We didn't we do this a few years ago, Rick, when all the maps were out there and people were changed from a V yeah. zone to an A zone? And um, yes. And maybe be this is different from those other map discussions, though. Oh, it is. Community. This is different from the water resources maps and all that stuff. This is floodplain maps only. Not coastal so much. No, coastal. All right, okay, because that's what was discussed. Uh, and maybe prior to that, it, had, it seemed to generate, out at that time, it generated a lot of public interest. Maybe it was before well, your time. but No, the last time was right after I was on the board, which would be about, you know, Six years. years, so five years ago is probably about right. But right. So this is just, it's its time again? Is that what this yeah. is trying yes, to do, it's an basically? Update. It's an update. Yeah, okay. that's Good. exactly what it is. Good. And I just found my notes. It's actually, we only have six months from the date of this letter, which is January 17th, to reply to this so that we're still eligible to get the flood insurance mm -hmm. program. Yeah. So if we don't adopt them by June, then we're not going to be eligible for flood insurance anymore. Or maybe people, the, again, does it tie into those grants when people are elevating their yes. homes? Okay, so yes. if we didn't do it, maybe Very much. we couldn't be part of that. That's Good. exactly what it is. And again, we were just sort of saying, yeah, they're in the wetlands regs for CONCOM, and you know, they, they do it at a hearing, and I wanted it more formal so we can show it. Yep. 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 Great. Any other questions? Move Article 19. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five to zero. Um, now we'll do articles number 21 and 22. And these are the acceptance of two uh, public ways, one Ava's Lane and one uh, Lauren Ave. Um, both of these streets have gone through the street acceptance process. These are not the ones that we've been talking about funding. The ones that <coughs> we were talking about earlier were Persimmon and Beach Tree and those ones. These are two new ones. Um, and they are over by Wampatuck off Tilden. 
right? Are they, Mr. Bjork owns there, it's his property. Um, and I, they have very, very little, if any, um, no. I think none. Impro uh, improvements that ha are going to be made. They've already been accepted. Two street signs, Two street. and they're on order, and they should be in next week. Right. So we'll install those. Right. And it is, just for the record, it's Lauren Lane and Avis Lane. Oh, okay. that's right. a good so point. This is good. Can uh, we Lauren make sure Ave. we catch that on the warrant? Thank you. Right. So Avis Lane and Lauren's apostrophe S? No, Lauren Lane. Lauren Lane. Got that part. Avis Lane. Great. So again, they've gone through the whole process, and this is the final step where we put it before the uh, town to vote for acceptance. And there will not be any um, improvements that need to be made or betterments that need to be paid, as we were just discussing with that revolving fund. Can I have a motion? Move Article 21, acceptance of public way, Ava's Lane. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 How about move Article 22? Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Can I okay. just ask one question? So where say who you are and where you live. Steve Bjorklund, 15 Captain Daniel Litchfield Lane. Uh, I'm the developer of the project. We're actually on on the 13th, I believe, for a public hearing on this. Mm -hmm. So this vote doesn't affect anything as far as the public hearing is concerned. I yeah, the public hearing is required in order of the formal taking of the road by the town, so uh, we have to. So that's why we have it. But this means it's going to be on the warrant, okay. and we have to have had the public hearing before the town meeting. Okay. And I have a conflict the night of the thirteenth, so I'll send in another representative to develop it. Okay. Great. It shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now we move to Article Number Five, the operating budget. So. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chair, um, you have the um, changes that I've recommended and also changes that it came up during the regular review of the budget, um, and I've presented all those recommendations to you. If the board is inclined to support <coughs> those, well, then sure. we can discuss them. If the board's inclined to make some changes, then you need to go into executive session before you go any further on the budget. Okay. Can you just repeat that? I mean, seriously, just repeat. Yeah, in your packet, yeah. you have um, the final recommended budget subject to your approval um, based on things that have changed in the course of your review mm -hmm. and some additional uh, recommendations based on additional capacity we had in the operating budget the last two weeks. Yeah. If the board is inclined to accept those recommendations, then um, you can continue to discuss. If you are not inclined to accept those recommendations, then you need to go into executive session before you approve the budget. I, I'm not questioning you in terms of whether the accuracy of that statement, I'm just curious, why would we need to go into executive session? Because, well, one of them would deal with the labor contracts. Ah. <coughs> so we would have to discuss. Yep, no. I'm sorry, yeah. I should have used a noun. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yep. Um, no, I knew that one of them did, I didn't know for, yeah, got it. So why don't, why don't we go into executive session and um, we can discuss that labor contract. And, and then, then come we'll, back out. Then we'll come back out yeah. and we'll finalize article number five and, and uh, possibly any other articles that okay. we need to add. Does that make sense? Yes, it Great. does. Is, is there anything, Mr. Chairman, is there anything we can do before? Prior to executive session, back. so people who yes. don't have to be here I don't even know if we have anything. Do we have yes, anything? hold on, folks. Um, we have a business minutes and adjournment. Yeah, there are some minutes. So that's actually, Joe, an excellent idea. Thank you. That we could talk about. You have my memo that I gave you, right, from last week showing all the changes? Yes. yes. Yeah. And that so you could do all of them except for the change. <laughs> Quite a few. Do you want to? If you work off the memo that you have in your packet, do you want? Do you want? You want to do that, Tony? Just go through them, and I'll skip. Um, sure. So, um, again, these are the the issues that came up during the review of the budgets that are different from the TA recommended. The first one is the library, an increase of two thousand seven sixty one um, to meet the minimum requirements for the library getting the aid to um, 
Library Commission's aid to municipalities. Uh, the shellfish was 450 increase um, for a new boat trailer. The Commission on Disabilities was a $2,000 budgetary error. Um, not, it wasn't meant to be cut. It just there was a, a tight uh, Scribner's error there, so that's 2,000. Same for the fire department and the fuel adjustment. For <coughs> some reason, that was not what it should have been. So 7,000. Um, we should skip number five, six. Um, unless you want to talk about those now. Okay. No. Nope. Um, the town clerk we already spoke about under Article 2 and the basis for that salary. And number 8 under town administration, I believe there were two issues with the Economic Development Commission request. They wanted uh, 15000 We were able to get a grant, but the cash match, I gave them 5000 There's a grant they can get for 10000 but it's a $4,700 cash match. So what I've done is I've recommended that, but the board wanted that to show up in the town administrator's budget as opposed to planning board. So that's what that is. Right, but it's th a $30,000 grant, not 10, right? Yes, I'm sorry, it was a $10,000 was our cash match yeah, responsibility. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 And then beautification asked for an additional $1,000. Um, we already talked about the Enterprise Fund Transfer Station and the board's aware of the South Shore Vocational <coughs> Technical School increase, which we were able to capture at the last financial <coughs> forecast meeting. So that's already been reflected in the budget. Right? Right. Okay. So we're going on the sheet that you just handed us, we're going with the town administrator's request for all of those items except for two or three of them that we're going to discuss in yep. executive session. Yep. So why don't I have a, get a motion to pass? Um, so moved. To, mo to pass the items, to pass Article 5's components as modified that we just went over. Correct? I think we actually have to pass all the departments except. Um, Those two, right? Yeah. OK, so how about this? Just read through the one. Can, I, can yeah, I? OK. Go right for it. Um, I'm going to um, move to accept uh, Department 122, which is the Board of Selectmen. Department 131, Advisory Committee. Do you want me to say the numbers? Or? No, that's just yep, fine. that's uh, good, John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Department 135, Town Accountant. <coughs> Department 141, Assessors. Department 145, Treasurer slash Collector. Department 155, Information Technology. Department 161, Town Clerk. Department 171, Conservation. Department 175, Planning Board. Department 176, Zoning Board of Appeals. Department 210, Police. Department 220, Fire. No. no. I'm sorry, I take that back. Department 241, Inspections. Department 295, Shellfish. Department 400, D DPW. <laughs> Department 423, Snow and Ice. Department 424, Street Lights and Beacons. Department 510, Board of Health. Department 4 541, Council on Aging. Department 543, Veterans Agent. Department 549, Commission on Disabilities. Okay. Department 610, Library. Department 630, Recreation. Department 650, Beautification. And finally, Department 691, Historical Buildings. Second. Uh, as recommended by the Town Administrator. As recommended by the Town Administrator. Second. Thank you. Second by Mr. Uh, Murray. For the, excuse me, further discussion? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous, five to zero. So why don't we do the minutes, other business, <coughs> and then we'll go into executive session. Mr. Chair, I don't think we have minutes because we did. Yes. I think there's one. Do. Is there one? Move the uh, Board of Selectmen's, go move on. that the Board of Selectmen vote mm -hmm. to accept the minutes of July 12th, 2011. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. I'll abstain from that. I got all mixed up with the. Uh, and. Um, in spirit, Joe. You were here in spirit. I was here in spirit. And other business? Anybody have any other business? Oh, I do have one. I uh, just want to. Go ahead, Joe. Go, John. Um, this Saturday, if people um, are interested, there is the uh, Mad Hatter's Ball, uh, which is part of, part of the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade. So uh, if people are interested, um, Get in touch with Ed Kelly and um, uh, the uh, and show up. It's at the Barker Tavern. Okay. Rick, um, this is for Tricia. There's a 
picture the rotary of a, of a roundabout? It's a concept. Concept? It's a concept. Okay. It's so not been vetted. All right. Um, Is there a timeline on this vetting? I've gotten a surprising <laughs> number of interest in this. It, um, yes. Um, that intersection needs to be improved desperately, as does the Tilden and what is it? Beaver Dam. Beaver Dam, thank you. And so we, I asked Mr. Bangett and the engineering department to start to look at solutions. Great, thank you. Okay, so all of you that walk in town hall and see that picture up there? Yes, that's It's not happening yet. It's just it's right. it's in a discussion yes, mode. It's a concept. It's cause concept, that's, I like that. Yeah. Hi there. Nope. Um, no. The only thing I'd like to do is just congratulate the basketball team at the high school. Both of them had an outstanding season this year. Both of them made it to the playoffs. Um, the, the girls are moving forward to the second round of the playoffs. They won last night. They're undefeated. I think it's 21? 22. 22-0. Friday night at Situate <coughs> against Notre Dame. Notre Dame of Hingham. And the boys, unfortunately, aren't moving forward, but they had a great season. And... Um, Hockey is also getting underway. Both the boys and girls made the playoffs. The girls for the first time in a while. Um, and I think they start Friday? First time ever for the girls' hockey team. First time ever for the girls, right. Um, and I, I believe they both start <laughs> next week. So we'll update you on that as well. Um, great. So that being said, why don't we go into executive session. We will be coming back to um, regular, session. regular session afterwards. Aye. Yes. 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 Just a point of order. Can you say the reason? It's on. Do you have? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Um, I will. Right on the agenda. Collective bargaining. Just Collective oh, that right agenda. Off the agenda. Yeah. No, 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 this one here. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, we'll be going to the agenda. We'll be coming uh, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, if an open meeting. Uh, may have a uh, detrimental effect on the government's bargaining and litigation position. Thank you. All right. Are we up, John? Okay.